If your LEDs look like this, which are perfectly spaced evenly across your tank, you might want to stick around because although it looks appealing to your eyes, today we find out if that aesthetically appealing light placement also benefits your corals, or can we do better? Today we're digging up over 20 past BRS TV Investigates videos on light testing, pulling out hidden information for ideal light spacing, and then sharing our best data-driven answer to the question, what is the ideal way to space two, three, or four light fixtures over my reef tank? Spoiler alert, evenly balanced spacing is not the answer, but let's find out what is. There's over 20 different light configurations of varying brands, shapes, and sizes to look at today, and they're divided into four groups. The two-fixture group, the three-fixture group, the four-fixture group, and in a group of its own, eight AI prime fixtures. What we're looking for is at what light spacing interval does the average PAR in the left and right tank edges come within 75% or more of the average PAR in the dead center, meaning that we've eliminated any hot spot in the center where the lights intersect and spread that light out towards the edges for ultra flat PAR distribution. With that, let's first look at the two fixture groups data made up of 11 different lighting options. For two fixtures over a 48 inch tank, dividing the tank length evenly into thirds shows us a balanced placement has each fixture perfectly centered at 16 inches from the left edge and 16 inches from the right. However, looking at the data, only two of the 11 actually meet or exceed our 75% PAR distribution goal without adjusting them the Atlantic Orphic V4s, and the Philip Coral Cares. And when you see the large form factor of these two lights, it's really easy to see why. A pair of Orphics at 24 inches each covers exactly 48 inches, while the Philips are 18 inches each, and also able to blanket the entire 48 inch tank from edge to edge out of the box. The remaining nine pairs of lights just come up short when placed at the same 16 inches on center, with the Orphic Compacts having the least amount of even spread, as we can see by the outer edges only measuring 45% of the center average part, while the Radeon XR15s come the closest to our goal but still short at 57%. The most interesting part is what happens to all nine pairs of LED combos when we start to spread the two fixtures apart. Every single lighting option, each mounted at their own respective optimal mounting height, surpasses the 75% goal when we center each fixture at 13 inches from the left edge and 13 inches from the right, upwards of 88% even coverage across that entire tank. It's pretty hard to argue that simply mounting a pair of lights perfectly balanced over a rectangular tank is going to yield the optimal results, especially when nine completely different lights, each with their own unique lenses, LED arrays, and module sizes, all show the best spread performance when spaced wider than what is aesthetically appealing. But let's see if that same holds true for the group of three and four light fixtures. In the second group, five different light brands start evenly spaced over our 48 inch tank at equal increments of 12 inches, and the results for uniform spread are pretty far away from the goal. Again, it's the Orphic Compacts that wind up with the least at 54%, while the Gen 5 Radeon XR30 show slightly better performance with the left and right edges at 62% of the center warm spot. In order to find the optimal spacing for three fixtures, we leave the center module fixed in the center of the tank and then move the left and rightmost modules outward. When we do that, what we find is the AI primes require the widest spacing to achieve 75% with the left prime centered at eight inches from the left edge and the right prime centered eight inches from the right edge. The Orphic Compacts were similar, but they found better spread with the outer lights just at nine inches centered. The remaining three all hit 75% with a spacing of 10, 24, and 10 inches on center. Again, just by spacing these lights wider than evenly balanced wound up creating upwards of 24% more even distribution of light throughout the entire tank. The third group of four light modules are next where an evenly balanced light spacing would have each module centered at 9.6 inch increments across the tank, but the closest we come to our 75% goal with this spacing is 72% from the four Kessel A360Xs. 
With that, we slid the extreme left and right modules outward, as well as the center two further apart, this time spreading the light more evenly from 83% upwards of 88%. As you can see, there are a couple of configurations that accomplish this. The two AI Hydra options spaced at 7, 17.2, 17.2, and 7, and the Radeon XR15 and A360X at 8, 17.2, 17.2, and 8. So should you just slap lights above your tank evenly and call it a day, or do you need a PAR meter to get this right? I'd say a good rule of thumb here, you don't need a PAR meter to achieve better spread performance. If you have two lights to mount, just put them a bit wider than what your gut would tell you by about two to three inches each. Three lights definitely keep one centered and move the outer two slightly closer to the edges, again about two to three inches. Four lights, this one is pretty close to optimal already at a balanced spacing. However, for those looking for a slight edge performance, you should consider moving each module slightly away from center to reduce that inevitable hotspot. But there's still one more group that we didn't mention yet, and that is the grid of eight AI primes over that same 48 inch tank. Instead of toying with hundreds or even thousands of various spacing configurations to find that optimal spread, we mounted each one to basically cover a one foot by one foot square area and then used zoning to balance out the distribution. By keeping the outer four primes at 100% intensity and then reducing the center four primes to 40% intensity, we were able to eliminate the hotspot in the middle and achieve an 84% even spread across the 48 inches. This is something very unique to using a large grid of individual modules where we can not only control the distribution, but we can also use zoning to increase the PAR in strategic areas. But of all the data that we recovered today, there's still the lingering question of how many lights do we need in the first place? Two or three for LPS, three or four for SPS? Is there a good starting point, a rule of thumb, or a guide to help? The answer is yes, and you can find that answer in Ryan's FAQ video right here, so check it out.